Welcome to Rock City. I'm Mark. I'm Domino. And let's get started with some music news. Let's do it. First, we got um, 6 a.m. is going is working on their third album. It's tentatively Excellent. due out later this year. Um, and then they're doing a 12-show residency with Motley Crue at the joint Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, Las Vegas. And um, so far, everyone's really excited about it. That, yeah, they'll be awesome. I had heard that when they did the last... Um, run at the Hard Rock, which I believe was right around a year ago. That they their show is so different that they are able you know just to have something set up for you know whatever a couple of weeks. Right. And it's like they can go a little a little crazy, and they do things that they haven't really done in the past. And their set list, I've heard, is a little more classic. Is more like from um, some deep cuts off of um, Live Wire and off of um, Theater of Pain. And girls and just you know some that are and, and shot the devil too just right with some awesome. deep cuts yeah yeah nikki uh actually said that he they're really proud of this album that all the songs are really unique so we're looking really looking forward to seeing what, what happens with that oh for the 6 a.m yeah, yeah yeah and 6 a.m is it they're one of those bands that when i first listened to i was just blown away i had that got stuck to my cd player for months yeah just phenomenal considering it's a three-piece on top of that <laughs> Gotta love a trio. Yeah. What, do you, what do you got for news? Yeah, Slash, um, did you know that he has um, a production company and he is now uh, making movies? Oh, nice. Yeah, and the cool thing about this is on the same day, October 4th, he's going to release the um, soundtrack, which you can get from pledgemusic.com that day. And you can get, when if you get it through the pledgemusic.com, you get the um, special interviews and um, a couple other um, special tracks. But the main uh, part of it is instrumental. But Miles Kennedy, I believe, is on like three three tracks from um, Slash's um, solo stuff. So it should be pretty cool. It comes out October 4th. Um, I, it's, oh, oh, by the way, he is kind of specializing in horror movies. And so his that's kind of um, kind of the thing. So um, And I think she let me look at my notes for this. It's called Nothing Left to Fear is the movie. We should get him and Rob Zombie to collaborate. No, that'd be perfect, <laughs> wouldn't it? That would be perfect. That'd be perfect. Right on. Yeah. This is some pretty solid music news. Yeah, for this week. All right, it's time now for a record. What's it called now? Wreck Table. Excellent. <laughs> so we're going to talk about Avenged Sevenfold, uh, City of Evil. That was a album that I've been listening to for the past couple weeks. And Ooh. it is tasty as shit like it's amazing it is fantastic yeah. from track one all the way i don't even remember how many tracks are on it because it's been on a loop so i don't even beginning and end it, it doesn't it doesn't happen that was the first album i ever um, bought and listened to from them and i was just blown away it is well well worth whatever you pay for the album um there's a couple of songs that i had always heard but never really knew the meaning behind until I actually sat down and read the liner notes inside the CD sleeve. I had no idea that song 10 on that album was um, uh, a tribute to Dime. Um, That's right, yeah. Or uh, just, you know, their, their, their feelings, I guess, on the whole subject. Exactly, the, yeah. the lyrics are really, um, really poignant and really deep. Very, very deep. Yeah, it speaks yeah. a lot about the incidents leading up to and talks like it's talking from the point of view of the the guy that shot him right you know they're yeah. talking to him they actually say in the song it must mean so much to end it all this shameful way it's pretty it's pretty yeah it's like i said very deep it's yeah. it's really deep but overall the whole fucking thing you don't have to skip in a song you don't have to no. do any of that no. it's, it's solid all the way through definitely check it out if you haven't if you have it Put it in your CD player again. I agree. I agree. You know what? I, I may have to do that soon. It's been a while since I've listened to it. I've been listening to the new one recently, which in a couple weeks. We're going to be talking about the new one. Yeah. And yeah, that's that. that um, We're waiting. Yeah. Yeah. We're waiting for October 19th to see them. In exactly. Concert. And we'll, have to kind of, we'll lead up to that um, show uh, with a review to, to the Absolutely. new album, Hail to the King. Uh, the, the album I have is by Devil Driver. It's called uh. Winter Kills. I am a huge, huge Devil Driver fan. Fuck yes. Uh, I'm, I was pretty good friends with uh, Jonathan Miller. 
um, the original bass player, yeah. and he quit. Uh, it was before this album. I think it was a couple of years ago. He actually went to rehab and all this stuff. And uh, but and I was kind of worried because he he did a lot of the writing, and this doesn't miss a beat. And there's a lot of um, their their last album. I don't want to say it lost me, but it was a little more. Um, it was like Pray for Villains was had a very good melodic groove to it, and the album after that kind of lost that for me. It was still good, but Just this one. This one is um, gets back a little more groove to it, and really they um, got has back to the yeah. yeah. See, I loved them after Resident Evil Apocalypse. I picked up the soundtrack for that, and they had uh. a Ren Holders mix of Digging Up the Corpses. Do they really? By Devil Driver, and they've also got a Ren Holders mix of Girl on Fire. Oh, by the excellent. way, my fantasy team that's kicking your ass. Oh, not mine, because we haven't played yet. <laughs> Just wait. We haven't played. That'll be week six, isn't it? Yes. Okay, then the trash type will start. But Digging Up the Corpses by Devil Driver is by far one of my favorite songs. Oh, I haven't yeah. heard the new album yet, so I might have might have a new one. Yeah, yeah, there's um, some. It's really cool stuff on there. All right, so the cool thing about the new Devil Driver Winter Kills album, if you get the deluxe version, it comes in a hardbound book. And the best part, not only does it have liner notes and cool pictures, but a live DVD. And that is worth the extra six bucks for the deluxe version. So, Absolutely. Yeah, I would definitely recommend that. Um, Winter Kills, Devil Driver for me. Yours was? City of Evil by Avenged Sevenfold. Excellent. All right, time now for my favorite segments, and that is rock and roll cinema. Cinema of rock. That's right. What's this week? We're going to talk about This Is The End. And um, quite the movie, if you haven't seen it, quite the experience. It's an all-around experience. Yes, and kind of cool things we got, we got to see together. So that was, yeah. um, we were definitely... Um, Cracking up? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's an understatement. So it's got everybody in it. Craig Robinson, Michael Sarah, James Franco, Aziz Ansari... Emma Watson. Oh, that's right. I forgot yeah. about that. Hermione stole all her shit. Yes, yes. Or Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. Oh, uh, Mike, was it Michael... Is it Sinna or the Michael guy? Michael Sarah? Sarah, yeah, Sarah, the, yeah. The kid that's lost his virginity like umpteen Yeah, yeah in every movie. Um, so like everybody... He loses something else in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he totally does. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's just so much happening in the movie. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a roller coaster ride. It actually kind of is. <laughs> and if you're um, in mixed company like your parents, maybe not want to see that movie. Maybe not. There's a lot of coming. <laughs> there is. Yes, and going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, totally worth it though. Like get your get your friends together, get the booze, have it, some it, shots, and yeah, it's a cool party movie. Yeah, because it's, um, it's about a party. Yeah, that's um, the end of the world type party. Yeah, but definitely a recommendation. Uh, I, I believe it's probably going to come out on DVD in the next month or two since yeah, the summer movies are done. Be, yeah. yeah. So, but check it out. This is the end. This is the end. Check out this exclusive footage in this week's band break. Sound all thing? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Actually, I'm taking that out because I need this one because <laughs> I lost it. No, I'm just Oh, check it, dude. This is a promo disc. Yeah, you got a promo disc there. Oh, good uh, story about them. Uh, their second God, album. You're going to love this. They're, we need to start doing this on interviews and yeah, tell this. Yeah, we Because now, now they're not going to Okay, so this. while we were recording the album, we were staying in Laz's apartment. You know, he's the ba bass player. That's sick. Cool. And uh, I, I was kind of, I was curious. I was going through his albums, and I was like, oh, the master disc for Confession. Their second album, and it was a really yeah, yeah. And it was master actually did, wow, yeah, and master copy. Yeah, it was legit. Fuck. Yeah, no, and I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty stoned. So, <laughs> so I open it up, and I'm just like, you know, you know, stoned, just going through, and then I pick up the no, you no, know, you walked over to me because you did it yeah. in front of me, and you were like, dude, look what I got. Yeah. Yeah, and I opened it up and I was like, dude, check this out. And then I dropped the master disc. <laughs> it rolled around on the floor. Falls on the floor and I'm like, oh, shit. Move. I'm like, oh, shit. Are like, oh. You know what I mean? And I pick it up and I'm like, I'm looking at it. I'm like, please don't be any scratches on this disc. You know? There wasn't. There wasn't. We but. also had one other. <laughs> put it all done. Right, yeah. We put it back right where it was. There was 
one other thing that was pretty funny too. There was a lot of construction that was going on. Oh, outside. I guess it was just, a lot more funny. I had a different story. Yeah, Go yeah, ahead. yeah. Just banging on the walls and everything. Well, there's actually two stories to that. The first one is is okay. I was waking up. I mean, because I finished recording my tracks and I kind of got drunk or whatever at, afterwards, and I had a I was hammered. Hey, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was hammered. Yeah, so, but uh, I. Uh, I wake up to this banging and it's just this loud banging and then I just I'm just like holy shit this this just will not stop and I'm like no 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 it was not just loud banging it was like like it was literally like, like if pictures were like of, falling off the wall because this they're construction, doing construction going like, on oh, three right, feet from oh, us and man. it was like boom boom like obviously everyone can hear this this is overwhelmingly yeah. loud oh and, man and then I lean over and I go hey. Do you hear that, man? <laughs> it was like someone like punching me in the face with a hammer. He's he, like, can you hear that? He was that? just like, no, Derek. I can't hear it. You know what I mean? It's silent like, to me. No, but no. but uh, the next day or whatever, um, I'm waking up early. Everyone else is asleep. I'm like, hey, I'm going to smoke a little bit or whatever. So I start to smoke and the, you know, there's this painter guy out, you know, out, out there just painting. They're, <laughs> doing what a painter guy does. Doing, right. <laughs> doing what a painting guy does. So, uh, He's just like, I'm smoking, and he's like, yo, yo, Laz. And I'm like, I'm like, do I say anything back? He's like, <gasps> yo, Laz. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, shit. So I kind of like hide in the bathroom area, which the bathroom is like this big, you know? And he's just like, yo, I smell it. <laughs> yo, I smell it. Just pass it out. And, and I'm like, I'm not gonna, you, you like know? ducked out of there. So I like curl up in a fetal position, yeah. corner everything, and then like, the, and like that same day I went, I told, Christian and he's just cracking up and it's just it was funny so like now a little joke to us now is yo lads yo lads you know oh, that's funny no so. the, <laughs> the best to me I guess those were hilarious too yeah, those when were they fun. happened yeah. but uh, they had told us like every night we got into Laz's apartment at like three in the morning it was late sessions and we would we walked there because the studio is pretty close. So we'd get there and he was like, man, I'm going to give you guys this. It's all yours. Just one thing. It's got to be quiet because the landlord lives next door. She's really close to me. She knows that you guys are going to be here. Just respect that. And we're like major respect dudes. Like we don't disrespect, right. period. We're nice. Yeah. Well, and when it comes uh, down to it, yeah, we're always going to do the right thing. You know, and, and, right, right. Right. And on top of on top of it's Laz's apartment. We're not going to mess anything up. No Molly crew is. Right. Yeah. We're just right. like, everybody be good. We we're didn't have to say the punch bowl. Right. Okay, so. I'm, okay. I'm trying to get to where this one's going. But oh, think, you'll know. But I think I know. So we get there after the first night. We're there. And we're all just like on high from like just having met them again and like the record already right off the bat the way it's getting laid out everything is feeling like epic we're like this is gonna be what makes us and uh we get in and we had some like we all had a lot of money at the beginning of it ended up with none but <laughs> uh there's a little bodega down the street and Derek just you know what we need to just make something you know we need to make some food and we're like Great idea. <laughs> it's like three o'clock in the morning, so we walk over. I this barely 20, remember this. I don't know. Twenty-four why. hour, uh, <laughs> twenty-four hour bodega, and buy a pizza, and come back, and we're like, we're gonna make New York pizza, and we were trying to be funny about it. <laughs> and we opened up his stove, put the pizza in there, and it's in there for about ten minutes, and and about that moment, we realize it's pretty smoky and then the fucking smoke alarm started just blaring and it's like four o'clock in the morning and, and he, we couldn't get it to go and he like tells us before and strictly do not make any noise and then bleep, 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 oh, like, it went man. on for like 15 minutes <laughs> it was just mad uh, ass. and then of course i'm so i'm curling up in a ball again yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, like, you can't see me you can't yeah. see me <laughs> yeah so we never told him about that Nothing. oh you know he didn't know about it no yeah. no we didn't because we ended up removing the batteries out of the rock actually it, Actually, it's funny because while we were recording tracks, Laz went back to his apartment and he asked us, so did you guys remove that thing off the wall? And we're like, no, I don't know what happened. Because <laughs> it went off, so we had to pull the batteries out of it and it finally shut up. I don't know what you were talking about. Yeah, exactly. Well, no one made a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, welcome back to Rock City. It is time for Rock and Roll DNA. What music is in my DNA? That's that's right. I, I know. I always like I cut my. It's like oh, ooh, I think I already know. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's do uh, first concerts. First concert. My first concert was Social Distortion. 
and I'm fairly certain it was either at the Galaxy Club or Deep Ellum Live. It's been a while. Don't really remember. Somewhere in Dallas. Got a t-shirt. Nice. Uh, probably one of the t-shirts that I've actually kept for the longest time. Probably got washed about 200, maybe 300 times. I kept it for a while. Uh, that's where I fell in love with Mike Ness. We're the same height, so I figured it was <laughs> meant to be. It was meant to be. There it was kismet. Go. So, um, and I've I've seen Social Distortion every time they've came through Dallas ever since then. Wow! That's wow! One That's of the only bands really cool. that I've seen consistently. Nice, nice. They're just that good. You know, that, and they're one of the bands that you kind of turned me on to. Yeah, they're 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 amazing. Yeah. And it's it's nice to see now that Mike Ness has kind of grown into his voice. His yeah. voice was always bigger than he was, it seemed. Because he's such, he's a little guy. Oh, like, was he really? No offense, Mike Ness, if you happen to watch this or... Because he will. He might. Yeah. Um, no offense, dude, but we're vertically challenged. <laughs> we can't help it. Um, I'm, with, I'm, with, I'm, I'm there. But he sings like he's like six foot. I That's mean, cool. It's, he, he's got a very convicting voice and the lyrics are sick. So yeah. it's hard not to like him. Yeah, very cool, very yeah. cool. That's a good one. Uh, mine goes back a little farther, I think. Um, dinosaurs <laughs> roamed the yeah. earth. Yeah, quite possibly. It was back in, uh, it would have been November 1979. And it was Kiss, it was on the Dynasty Tour. Nice. Yeah, my dad took me, me and my best friend, and who I'm still friends with, and it took me and him um, after school, and it was in Colorado, and it was in November, so it was snowing. And my dad didn't tell me until later on, but he thought we may not get to make yeah, it. Yeah, because of the snow. I mean, it was like coming down. I mean, it probably was about three or four inches. And it was an hour drive. So we um, went all the way down to Denver. And my first show, it was um, banal. It's like, it's like, wow, this is Kiss right there. Oh, my gosh. And um, I actually still have my shirt. Let, let me get that. Hold on. Hold on one second. Wow. Yes. This is pretty impressive. We're about to see a vintage piece of rock and roll memorabilia. That's right. Oh Look at my that. shit snacks. Is that badass or what? And it's tiny. It is. Yeah. It was, I, I was like in junior high. So yeah, I still have it and I know exactly where it's at at all that times. That kids is proof yes. that rock and roll never dies. Never does die. Never <laughs> does die. Now, I will never forget that concert. They changed the way I looked at music forever. I mean, I'm, I love metal. I love all types of music. But I mean, Kiss has a special place in my heart. That's where it started, yeah. That's right. That's in my rock and roll DNA. <laughs> All right, time now for uh, Concerts of the Week. Let's do this. All right, what do you got? We got September 21st, House of Blues, Between the Buried and Me. Uh, we also got, uh, I think, opening the show, The Contortionist and Safety Fire. So that's definitely one wow. that you want to check out. House of Blues, fabulous venue, so get out there. Cool. Mine, they're both on the same day, September 26th. Uh, Trees has Camelot. Camelot is, they're from Europe. And they're very progressive, but man, they are phenomenal. They're, I mean, they're very, um, it's kind of like dream theater, um, extreme. They're like, it's really, really, you know, it's a lot of thinking music. It's cool. Right on. Um, and then the one I'm going to be at is Saxon and Fozzy. Saxon is a great 80s slash 90s metal band. They, um, I have their whole entire catalog, which is a lot. I even bought a couple of ones in England because nice. that's where they're from. And I also bought one in Germany when I was there, too. That's how I got my picture taken by. They're international. Yes. They, oh, yeah, they're huge. Really? No, that's huge here. And then Fozzie, if you're very familiar with him, that's Chris Jericho. He's from the the wrestling dude. Yeah. And I have, actually, I've never heard them. I've heard of them, but I've never heard their music. I heard it's pretty, like, straight ahead of rock and roll, so I'm looking forward to seeing them. Awesome. So it sounds yeah. like a good weekend to get out and check out maybe some new bands you haven't heard of. I know... I might have to go check out Camelot. Yeah, and Saxon's at House of Blues. So, um, awesome. Yeah, great. Uh, it's now time for Rock and Roll Free For All. Yes, it is. And today we are going to talk about the subject of 
going to a concert and not being able to pay attention because there are so many chicks flashing their milk makers. <laughs> By that, I mean boobs, tits, cans, jugs, whatever you want to call them. But it happens. Sometimes often, sometimes not so often. Some True. of them you want to see, some of them you're not sure you want to see. And it's distracting. You don't, yeah, you don't know if you want to look at the band, which is what you should be looking at. Hopefully you paid for your ticket. Or do I want to look at this broad over here who's compulsively flashing her tits? For what reason, I don't know. The band's not going to take you home. So I don't get it. It's, you know, I think it's just a tradition. I, I, got, I got to say, when I was um, in... I was in Austin, so years ago, when I saw Motley Crue, actually for the first time, is at a small place, Austin Music Hall, and I had, uh, me and one of my friends had, we were like second row, and we're like, it's a dilemma. Look here or behind us? And it's like... You get tennis I, I don't, snack. I don't know. You get tennis and, snack. Yeah, and it was, um, yeah, it's... But, like, like again, I said, yeah, it's a tradition. But how dare you put me to a decision after I've spent my hard-earned money... To see a band that I so desperately right. wanted to see. Yeah, I, I you know, get it either. maybe Crazy. maybe you just flash your boobs whenever you see their music video. <laughs> At home. You still get to flash your tits. I still get to see my concert. Nobody mm. has to die. That, exactly, exactly. Uh, another antics that shows to me is which I think you're probably more into than I am is a whole mosh pit. For me, it's annoying as hell. Because I get there, and I'm trying to watch the show, and if I get too close, and that pit's going, it's like, well, I'm not going to get in there, because I, it's kind of the same thing. I want to see the band, and I want to see the performance, and instead of worrying about if I'm going to get, you know... Kicked in the face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't want to get kicked in the face. Now, see, on the other side of that token, I'm the girl that he has to worry about getting kicked in the face by. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's really why I don't want to go. You're right. I go to a show specifically to mosh because usually I'm pissed off about something. Oh, well, there you go. So. And what better way to take it out than on some stranger that I don't fucking know and just kick him around a little bit. Yeah, now, I'm all of 5'5 five, five and 92 pounds soaking wet. So you can imagine that me being in the pit... It is a little right. perilous at times. <sighs> I have left mosh pits with full-on footprints on my ass and back. That's I have, impressive. I have left mosh pits unconscious. I have left mosh pits missing clothing. Wow. I kid you not. I have left mosh pits with bumps on my head. That's, that's intense. Yeah. I have left mosh pits from the side of the stage. <laughs> it's like, no... That's impressive. I, you know, I, I gotta say this. Like, that's that's cool. I mean, you can do that. Go in there and and get your aggression out. And that, that's what they're there for. I mean, there is for like, you know, you know, good way to get all that anger. It's because out. I'm pissed off that there's fourteen dollar beers at a concert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I. That's what I paid at Jexa, by the way. Fourteen dollars for a uh, twenty-four ounce PBR. Yeah, and the worst part is you don't want to kind of break that down, to saying, "Well, I could have actually bought a case with that." Yeah, I yeah. could have. Yeah, so I could have. Yeah. I could have bought a lot of PBR for fourteen dollars. Yeah. yeah, but would you want to? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, okay. You know it's good because it has a blue ribbon on it, Mark. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, my thinking. Any more antics you want to talk about? Uh, you know, there's there's tons and tons of antics that go on at concerts. There's moshing. There's tit flashing there's smoking weed at concerts we've never seen that we've never seen that we no. don't we don't participate in that we don't nope. condone it nope i'm sure some grateful dead shows if they were still around they may do other stuff i remember my friend's dad talking about his first concert was uriah heap wow and he left that... he left halfway through because there were so many kids around him smoking weed and he was Total straight edge at the time. Never drank, never smoked cigarettes, nothing. He's like, these damn hippies. Wow, <laughs> wow. That's, and I'm sure that was um, probably back in the early 70s. Yeah, I probably just dated my friend's dad, but it's, it's all good. <laughs> but not dated. Not dated, no. <laughs> well. Let's get that clear. <laughs> well, I guess that's the antics for, uh, for Rock City this week. <laughs> 
All right, thanks for joining us this week on Rock City. Had a great time. And always, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter. And as always, rock, rock out. out.